It is my uh, privilege to welcome you all to the encounter. I am Mario Paredes and I am the CEO of Somos Community Care. It's a healthcare organization at the service of the most needy in the city of New York. It is also my privilege and duty to introduce uh, Ricardo Rivera Cardenon. He is the Chief Business Development Officer of Summer Community Care since the February of 2017. Previously, Ricardo was the Executive Director of Puerto Rico Health Insurance Administration and also served as Secretary of the Puerto Rico Department of Economic Development. Ricardo earned a bachelor degree in engineering, a master's degree in engineering management from Cornell University. Additionally, he completed a master's degree in health administration from Columbia University. You can see his impressive full biography on the Encounter website. Let us welcome our guest, Ricardo Rivera Cardón. Good afternoon. I would like to start by thanking Mario Paredes for that wonderful introduction. And also, I would like to thank the organizers of this New York Encounter 2020 for having me here today. Let me start the presentation by giving you a brief overview of what SOMOS is. SOMOS is a network comprised of more than 2,500 diverse independent community-based primary care physicians. Just to give you an overview of the demographics, 46% of that network is Latino, 41% of that network is Asian, and then we have 13% all over the world, representing all nationalities around the world, from Russia all the way to, uh, to Australia. We serve more than 650,000 beneficiaries that live in vulnerable and underrepresented communities across the New York State. And just to give you another perspective of the demographics of our population, 65% of them are Latino, 25% Asian, and 10% all, all over the rest of the world. We believe that the community-based doctors are the key to transform our healthcare system. And why is that? Because we are the people who we serve. We share their culture. We come from where they come from. We speak the same language. And we also have been discriminated at some point. We have felt powerless at some point too. So we know how it feels. For SOMOS, it is more than just provide a transactional health service. For us, it is, a, it is all about caring for humans, especially those who are underserved and who are invisible. Today, we have many initiatives, we have many programs, but today I'm going to share three initiatives that are representatives of, of what we stand for. And the first one is the Social Determinant Intervention Program, the Social Determinants of Health Intervention Program. And just to give you a brief background, 5% of the population consumes 50% of the existing healthcare resources. And that is not because they want intentionally to do so. 
It is because they have chronic diseases. It is because they live in deplorable environments. It is because they are homeless, because they have lack of access to food, because they don't have a job, and if they do, they don't earn enough to pay the bills and bring food to the table. And I'm pretty sure that many of us, we have gone through that. I grew up through that. I know how it is to wake up in the morning in a room that has a crack in the door, in the, in the wall, from one side to the other, and you could see outside. I know how it is to study with a candle because the electric service was cut because of lack of payment. I know how it is to go to a neighbor's house to ask, please, leave me take a bath in your bathroom because the water was cut because lack of payment. And also, when you open the door, and when we open the door, my brothers and I, <laughs> and saw that there was no food in the refrigerator, we scattered through the street to try to find some friends to gather us and invite us to the table so that we can eat that night. And like that, there's many people and they don't necessarily have the opportunities or maybe the, the, the advantages and the doors that open, for example, for me and for my brothers to get out of that. So we are very cognizant of that and we, we take care of that when we provide the care. And that is why we partner with organizations in the community to tackle the economic instability, the food insecurity, the housing instability, and to make sure that our people stick to the doctor's plan and the doctors follow the doctor's instructions so that they can get better and they are empowered and they control their diseases. But that service that we provide to the community, to those that are entitled for those services, is not enough because our community has many people that do not qualify for that. And let me show you one of those initiatives that we have created in order to, in order to take care of those people. I don't know if you know, but it's, it was new to me when I, when, I, when, when I became part of this initiative that more than 40,000 kids are intercepted trying to cross the borders every year in the United States. Some of them, they come on a company, and the ones that come with their parents or with someone are separated from their parents when they are caught at the border. And then those kids are scattered throughout the states. And New York State have their share of uh, those undocumented, a children that comes into the United States. So we partner with the Office of the Governor of New York in order to facilitate health services, not only to the children, but also to the family unit in which these, in which these children are placed on. SOMOS makes sure that they receive the necessary health care or the health care that they need. We go where they are. We don't, we don't make them come to us. We go to their homes, we conduct screenings, examinations, and then we refer to the pertinent specialists as needed. In a nutshell, we make sure that they are treated with dignity while they are in U.S. soil. But again, that's our immediate community. But we are part of an extended community with brothers and sisters abroad, away from our borders, that sometimes experience mishaps and experience disasters. And that's the example of the third initiative. As soon as Puerto Rico was devastated 
by Hurricane Maria in September 2017, SOMOS gathered a group of doctors and we went immediately uh, to Puerto Rico. Just to give you a perspective, Maria is the most destructive hurricane in Puerto Rico's history. And Puerto Rico has been under the Spanish rule and then the U.S. for more than 500 years. So, and this is the most devastated hurricane in its history. It left all the islands, 3.4 million residents without electricity, water, and communications. People were in despair. And those people that tried to escape from the island during the aftermath flooded the airport. But then those who stayed struggled with severe shortages of food, services, and products. The healthcare system was decimated. And the needed help was taking too long to get to rural municipalities away from San Juan, the capital, affecting close to 2.5 million people. So what do we do? We identified and adopted a hard to access region in the mountains where, where nobody went. And then we established two pop-up clinics one in Naranjito and one in Comerillo. Additionally, SOMOS distributed food and supplies, serving thousands amidst chaos and uncertainty. And why? Because that's what doctors on the front line does, do. That's what we are called to do. It's not just giving a transactional service, is caring for our people. And now, before, before I wrap up the presentation, I want to make sure that I make a call to action. Because this is not a one group effort, this is a team effort. And all of us, we need to be together in order to transform and to change this system. And sometimes we believe that in order to create transformation, to change things, we need pharaonic endeavors, we need big projects. Uh, but what I have learned in my life is that usually small and Small, small and simple actions can result in huge positive feedback, uh, impact. And it's as easy as each one of you, the group here represented, going to your doctor at least once a year. Very simple, only one, you have 365 days. Take one, take an hour. Let's put in the worst case scenario, take two hours and visit your doctor. <clears throat> Second, eat healthier. I'm not saying go to the extreme. Now, you know, quit everything that you're doing and just eat greens and whatever. Just eat healthier, one day at a time, one step at a time. Sleep at least eight hours. Research shows the human being needs to sleep. And if you sleep, you are healthier. And if you are healthier, you consume less of the healthcare resources. And then you leave those resources to the ones that really need it. Hydrate yourself. Very simple. Just drink your water. Exercise at least three times, a, three times a week. You don't have to run a marathon. Just walk for 15 minutes. Listen to music, listen to a podcast, but do something. Stimulate your body. And if you are sick, follow the doctor's orders. 
It's as simple as that. And when my when my grandfather when my grandmother was alive, I usually fought with her because after she had a heart attack, the doctor said, the cardiologist said, you cannot raise anything heavy, you cannot drink alcohol, you cannot eat, eat fatty food. And there she went. She wanted her course light. She wanted to, to, to be like cooking for the entire family. She wanted to be brooming and sweeping and all that. But that's follow the doctor's order. Uh, and another important thing, that's what you can do, but influence those that you can influence. Do the same thing, try that the other family members and your friends do the same. And I can assure you, here we have close to 100 people. If each one of us impact three other people, that's 400. This 100 plus the other three. 400 people. And if those impact three other, you have 1,200. And keep going, and in a blink of an eye, you are covering millions of people. So thank you very much. And please, let's work together to make sure that we transform this system into one that really cares for who, for humans. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. We truly appreciate your contributions in trying to develop a new way of doing healthcare and healthcare for the most needy and the poor. Dear friend, Somos Community Care is trying to develop a new way, and that is to restore the old-fashioned way, which is the family doctor, the community doctor, the neighborhood doctor. This is what we are trying to do. We have 3,000 medical doctors in the city of New York in a network working in the neighborhood because we firmly believe that the family doctor, the neighborhood doctor, the primary care doctor in the neighborhood is really the response to the reform of healthcare in our country. The other reason why we are engaged in this is because we firmly believe that healthcare requires a holistic response. It is not just simply medicine. It is what Ricardo pointed out, you know, all the social determinants of health are extremely important in today's country and in today's society if we want to address the big problem of healthcare. Healthcare in our country, it is under a severe crisis. We pour billions of dollars, but the results that we get are very poor contrary to other countries that are wrestling with this issue, our country has a very corrupt system in healthcare. And we have to address this as a nation. And finally, I ask myself as a Christian, as a professional, as a professor in philosophy, why I am involved in this? It because I firmly believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the gospel mandate is to humanize everything that is inhuman. Thank you for listening. Thank you for inviting us.